Hey everybody, it's Amy with Feel Better with Yoga. How are you doing out there? I hope you are staying safe and that you're healthy and that you're coping and warding off boredom as well as you can despite the stay at home restrictions that we're all under right now. Today I'm going to bring you a chest opening practice. And the reason we do that is to combat and reverse all of the posture that we tend to keep all the time anyway in regular life, but especially now during the stay-at-home measures. We're all working online on the computers like this. I've been working puzzles like it was my job. Lots of this posture, lots of tension in the neck and the shoulders. Our chest and front shoulders stay really contracted and tight, and that causes the upper back, the trapezius, all the neck muscles, these things that get so tense and tight, causes them to hurt. These muscles are all in overdrive, trying to hold our heavy heads up. So today we're going to work on relieving all this, letting it take a break, by doing that by opening the chest and front shoulders. So before we start, you're going to need a couple of props. Um, a cushion. This is an outdoor cushion. You can get a couple of bed pillows, cushion from your couch, anything, as long as it's supportive, but soft and squishy and comfortable. Second thing is a belt strap, even a towel that you can roll up, make it skinny, and hold really wide. It's got to be wider than this or it's not going to work. Something you can really slide your arms wide. This is a bathrobe belt. Anything will work. I've also got my blocks. If you don't have blocks, don't worry about it. You've got your coffee table nearby or bring a chair over to you in case you need it. So to start, pause the video, go get your stuff, and then we'll start. Get your cushion, your pillows, whatever. Bring them up behind your pelvis. And we're going to gently lay back on them, giving ourselves that little, that little bit of an arch in our back, but it's supported. Lay your head down, wiggle, get yourself situated where it feels OK. I like to keep my knees bent so that it relieves any extra bit of strain in the lower back. Arms come out wide. And find your breath, just like we do with every practice. Listen for it. And feel it. Feel it coming into your body, filling you up and expanding you. And feel it leaving and deflating you as the breath leaves. One way to notice your breath is to notice the movement through your body as your breath comes and goes. So you feel your chest rising and falling. Feel your rib cage expand on all sides and then deflate. You might feel your belly lift and fall. And as we lie here, the chest muscles that are always working so hard, crunching together, they get to relax and open. And the muscles across the trapezius and the neck are able to relax and quit trying to hold these heavy heads up. Always noticing our breath, but at the same time start to notice where the back side of your body is coming into contact with the ground. You can wiggle your toes and press them into the floor. Feel where the balls of your feet and your heels press into the ground. Feel all the pressure points, your bottom, the bones in your bottom, the edge of your pelvis and tailbone. Feel what parts of your arms are touching the ground and the backs of your hands. Feel your whole spine supported by this soft cushion. Feel how heavy your head is and feel it digging down into the ground. Breathe yourself into letting go. Releasing tension that we hold all the time. Sometimes because of the way we use our muscles, in the case of our posture, overusing the chest and overstretching the upper back and neck. But we also carry a lot of tension from stress. And we carry that through our upper body, through our neck, through our shoulders. 
as you lie here, let your face relax, no expression being held, as though you just fell asleep lying here, your jaw is relaxed. Take a couple more breaths here. As you exhale, bring the arm over to one side, from one side, over across your body. We're going to help ourselves, maybe even lift up your hips with your hands. Help yourself roll over. Roll over to one side, top arm presses down into the ground, other hand presses down to lift and support you. And bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. And remember, that's different for all of us. Maybe you want to pull the cushion under your bottom and sit on that. Maybe you want to sit on blocks. Maybe your knees are up high. Who cares? That's just where your body goes. Let yourself be there. Bring the hands in front of your body. Walk your hands out in front of you. If you have a giant rock in your living room, you can put your hands on that if it's, <laughs> if it's in your way big stretch and you feel that stretch across the trapezius and in the lats all the way down your spine and in your ribs walk your hands back in and if your hands didn't walk out far it doesn't matter we're just going to whatever degree we can go to sit up hands wherever you want them to be let's rock the neck a little bit just loosen it up some inhale exhale to the other side Inhale, exhale, one more side to side, and now let's go in a big circle, one direction, breathe your head around and all the way back down, and then switch directions, one circle to the other side. After that, exhale, bring your head back up, hands in front of you again. Again, walk your hands forward. Maybe they go here. That's as far as they go. That's fine. That doesn't matter. Maybe they go <laughs> to your giant rock in your living room that's in your way. Put your hands on it. It's a couple of breaths here. Okay, now walk both hands all the way over to one side, and they might just be right here farther out. It just really doesn't matter. But the arm, the opposite side that you're reaching to, you feel that big stretch through the rib cage, in the lats, through the shoulder, the back of the shoulder. Take one more breath, and then inhale, lift that arm in front of you all the way up towards the ceiling or the sky. Big stretch right here through the ribs. And then it feels like almost a little twist through the waist. Pull that arm back the tiniest little bit. Not trying to get the arm behind you. We're just trying to feel that openness of the chest and the front shoulder. Giving extra st strength to the back of the shoulder, the upper back. One more breath. Okay, take that arm back down to the ground. Walk both hands towards the front and over to the other side. Hold here. And now one thing that I notice, if I try to reach farther, you know what happens? This hip rises up off the ground. Well, it doesn't need to do that. So I'm actually kind of cheating by bringing my arms out farther. So just walk your hands back in so that that hip can be on the ground. Next breath, inhale the arm that's in front of you, lift it up. Gently, ever so slightly, pull it back. Feel how open your chest is. Okay. 
gently, carefully, slowly take that arm back down. Walk both hands back to center. Use your hands to push back to sitting up tall and straight. Now we're going to get the strap, belt, um, towel, whatever you've got. If you've got a towel, roll it up so it'll be nice and skinny so you don't whack yourself in the face with it. Take your, arm, your hands wide, and I bet you're probably even going to have to widen them after we go through this. So what we're going to do is inhale the arms up, and as we exhale, let them go behind us. We'll see here, my hands are too close together because my arms are stuck. So I'm going to take them as wide as I need to. Let's see, right there. Ah, uh, and bring them back down. Exhale, and then inhale them back up. Exhale, forward and down. I love this. I love, especially my favorite part is this part right here where the arms transition from being in the front to being behind you. Keep that going at your own pace, letting your breath guide you. Your breath is like a conductor and your body is the orchestra, so your breath tells your body when to move. One more up and back. Now breathe in, arms up. Exhale forward and down. Ah, oh, I love that. Shake out your hands and your wrists. I'm going to take one arm, doesn't matter which one. Lift it up behind, up beside what? Above you. <laughs> hmm, prepositions. Uh, lift it up with the strap or towel in your hand and then bend your elbow so it's right here by your ear other arm, bring it behind you, and you're going to grab the towel or the belt from behind you. I'm going to spin around so you can see what this looks like. So we start out holding maybe here. Walk your hands closer together until that's just it. That's as far, that's as close together as they'll get. Then relax. The weight of the bottom arm is pulling this arm allowing it to stretch, pull the chest open, maybe even try to pull the elbow back a little bit. Breathe a few breaths here. One more breath. Exhale first. Slide the bottom arm down. Let that relax first. Shake it out. Then, oops, sitting on that, let that go. Other arm. Hand, strap in the hand, lift that arm up. Bend the elbow. Reach behind, grab the end, the bottom of the strap. Walk your fingers closer together to wherever they'll go. Open shoulders, open chest. One more breath here. And as you exhale, slide the bottom hand down. Shake it out. Other arm comes down. We can lose the strap just for a little bit or for a while. And now we're going to come up onto hands and knees. So carefully transition. If your knees are achy or you're on a hard surface, get a towel. Even get the cushion you were on. Put it under your knees. And start out here. Just rock a little bit side to side. Really loosening up the spine, the hips. One more breath. Okay, hips come back into the center. Let's come into what's called cat and cow, and I like to call it arching and rounding because that's what we're doing. So with an in-breath, lift your face up, chest pulling forward ahead of you on the mat, shoulders pulled back, squeezing the shoulder blades together and letting the back the arch in the lower back, increase just a tiny bit more, just to wherever it's comfortable. That's cow. Now as you exhale, round into cat, pushing your shoulder blades and that space between them up to the sky. Breathe yourself in and out of that.
one more breath here. And after the exhale, come back into that neutral spine, what you might think of as a flat back, meaning we're not arching, we're not rounding, we're just neutral. You stay where you are. I'm turning to face you so you can see me better. Now we're going to inhale one arm out to the side and lift it up. It's not going to go all the way to the ceiling because you might have to move your hips to do that. So just part of the way up, keeping the hips squared. Exhale, thread that arm underneath you and towards the other side to wherever you want it to go. And breathe it back up. Exhale it through. Let your breath be the force moving your arm here. Imagine your breath is the wind that's blowing the treetops and it's blowing your arm just like that. One more. And bring that hand back to the floor. Other arm. Inhale out and up. Exhale through. The bottom arm supporting you can stay completely straight or bend as much as you want. No rule. Do you hear that bird singing for us? Regardless of everything happening in the world around us, all the changes and restrictions, some things stay the same. The ground beneath you, the air around you, Birds are still singing outside. They don't know what's going on. Let yourself enjoy that. Remember that. Last time, exhale the arm through. Bring the hand back to the floor. Good. Back to where you, you are. We're going to curl the toes under and lift up into downward facing dog. And if you've watched me before, you know you don't have to have your hands on the floor. You can. You can lift up into downward dog with your hands on the ground. If that feels too icky and stiff and tight, get blocks, or again, coffee table, and lift up that way. Maybe everything is super tight and you just want to have be up this high. That's still the same thing. Stretching the backs of the legs, lengthening the spine. March your knees in place. One more breath. Okay, gently let your knees back down to the floor. Use blocks, and if you don't have any, it's okay. Put your hands on the floor, or coffee table, or a chair. We're gonna step one leg forward, all the way forward as far as it'll go. And sink down into this kneeling lunge. You can keep hands on the floor. You can use blocks so that you pick your chest up a little bit higher. So again, we're not crunching like this. Or maybe even bring hands to the thigh. That's a little bit harder to balance, but give it a try. So we usually we do this very passively and the top of the foot is resting on the ground. If you want to change that up for a little more action, curl your toes under and push through that foot and you really feel it through all this. Again, it's your choice. It's a passive way to do it or an active way. I do both different times, depending on what I feel like. Okay, the hand that is on the inside, either on the floor or on a block, whatever height, we're going to keep our hand down, twist through the waist, facing away from, or wherever, to the other side. Lift that arm up. Twisting lunge. One more breath. Okay, untwist. Take that arm back down. And then let's rise up, or push back. Ah, stretch out that tight hamstring. <laughs> I always think of the hamstring is a lot like a messy house, and you clean it, and then 
before you know it, it's messy again. So the hamstring, it doesn't matter how often I do this, it just gets tight again. And that's not true. With years of practice, this hamstring has gotten so much looser. But when I first start out in the day, it doesn't like me very much. So be gentle with it. Bend the knee, flex the foot back and forth. Okay, and then drag that foot back. Maybe straight back, maybe just bring it around. And that was a big stretch. So stretch that leg out, kick it around a little bit. Do whatever you want. My hip just popped, that felt good. Okay, other leg. Step through, and I'll show you. If you don't have blocks, it doesn't matter. Bring that leg around, get it up in front of you. Hands on the floor and sink down here. If you're able, use your, if you don't have blocks, bring your hands up to your thigh so that you're more upright. Back foot relaxed or toes curled under and pushing into this. It's such a bright, beautiful day here in Houston that I wanted a little bit more activity. It's sort of the sunshine is making me feel, feel more active. The last few days when it was super cloudy and rainy, I just felt like restorative. So always adjust to how you're feeling. Okay, the inside hand comes down on the floor or on a block. Little twist through the waist and lift the other arm up. One more breath. Untwist, bring that arm down and shift back. Stretch out the leg, flex the foot back, bend the knee as much as you need so that the back doesn't start to round. And yeah, I love doing it with blocks or when I'm inside, the coffee table right next to me to support me so I can bring my chest up and my hamstrings and calf are still getting all I need. One more breath. Okay, relax that leg, drag it around, back, whatever. Kick it out a little bit. Ah. <sighs> okay. Let's come back into downward facing dog on blocks or hands on the floor, whatever you like. Curl the toes under, lift the bottom up, walk the feet back. March your knees. Now let's add to our downward facing dog another side body rib stretch. So come up onto tiptoes and then let both heels fall over to one side, to the same side. Nothing tricky, nothing weird. Knees don't have to be straight, nothing, nothing to do. But you feel that in the opposite side of the ribs, uh, the, the opposite side of where your heels went. The ribs on the opposite side of the body is what I'm trying to say. Take a couple of good stretching breaths here. Okay, back to center. Bring the tip up on tiptoes, bring the heels high and over to the other side. Uh. One more breath. Okay, back to center. We're almost done, I promise. Shoulders are probably aching. Up high, and then pull the heels towards the ground. Notice I did not say put them on the ground. They might not ever reach the ground. But that's the direction. You feel it deep in the calves, probably right above your heel, all up into the hamstrings. Okay, relax, bend the knees, walk your feet up. If you ever get tired, pause. Pause and sit in child's pose and let yourself relax. Okay, take the feet a little wider than hip distance apart. Bend your knees a bunch. Hang here in ragdoll. Named ragdoll because that's exactly what it looks like. A ragdoll that somebody's holding by the waist and everything else is just floppy. Grab opposite elbows, hang in the center, or you can sway a little bit. <sighs> Okay. 
Okay, let go of the elbows. Bend the knees more and be mindful of your back, using your hands on your thighs if you need to, to press up to standing. If your back is in amazing shape, then just rise up. That's okay too. Mountain pose. Let your head acclimate to being right side up again. Feet about as wide apart as your hips. Palms forward, fingers spread wide. That sort of military posture. Shoulders back and down, chest wide open. Feel the ground underneath your feet. Can you feel yourself moving as your breath moves through you? Even when we think we're being still, we're not. We're always moving. That's the power of our breath. One more breath. Okay, let's do move in and out of mountain pose three times. Breathe in, arms come all the way up. Palms and fingertips touch. Exhale, hands to heart. Forward fold right here through the hip crease. Bend your knees if you need. We want to keep the back as straight as we can. Fingertips to the floor or something beneath you or coffee table. Then bring your hands to your shins or your thighs. Halfway lift, raising the back up a little higher. Super strong back. Exhale, forward fold. Two more, rise up. Inhale, hands reaching for the sky. Exhale, hands to heart, forward fold. Halfway lift, strong back. Little tiny bit of pressure here on your shins or none at all. Exhale, forward fold. Rise up, one more set. Inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Now rise up. Bring your hands together and down to your heart. And breathe here. You don't need to close your eyes. Mine are closed. Good, is it? It is super bright out here. One more breath. Okay, let your arms hang down. Let's come into Warrior One. We're going to take a step back with one foot onto the toes and the ball of the foot, and then we'll press that heel down into Warrior One. You can take your legs as far apart as you want, as long as the hips are able to stay mostly facing straight ahead with your shoulders. So if you go farther out, look what happens. My hips start opening that way. Uh -uh. Back knee hates that. We're not in alignment. So I'm going to bring the feet closer together, re-square my hips as well as I can. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, bend the front knee. You can bend the front knee as deep as you want, as long as you can still see your foot beyond the knee. We usually hold right here. Let's take the arms out to the side or even down a little bit. Huge chest opener here. Maybe even let your head drop back, but be careful of your balance. Good. Relax that. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, open. Warrior two. Here, you can take your feet as wide as you want and then bend the knee so that the knee is right on top of the ankle. So it might be right here. It might be farther out here. It doesn't matter. Go to where your legs want to go. Arms open wide, chest opening, heart open, pulling forward. Something's in the bushes, <laughs> bushes over there. If you're not outside, doing yoga with me right now. I hope you get outside today. And if it's bright and sunny, enjoy it. If it is rainy and cloudy, enjoy it. Enjoy the constancy of earth and nature and life, even when it seems like everything else in our lives has been put on hold or taken from us right now. Nature and outside is still the same. 
One more breath. Okay, straighten that knee. Mostly straight, doesn't have to be locked straight. Push the left hip out, or this hip, out to the side. Lean with this arm. Take that hand down to the shin. Lift the other arm up. And just like we did before when we were sitting, take that arm back the tiniest bit. One more breath. Okay, carefully rise back up. Use that hand to push back up to standing. Turn that foot forward. Turn the other foot around to the other side. Now spin the back foot around, and we're coming into warrior one with the other leg in front. So you may need to bring the feet closer together. Breathe in, arms up. Exhale, bend the front knee. Make sure you don't hyperflex it, bringing the knee in front of the toes. Knee right above your, sh your ankle. Couple of breaths here, and then we're going to bring the arms either out to the side or even right here. Big chest opening, heart opening. And to do that, we're strengthening and using all the muscles in the trapezius, getting them stronger so they can support our heavy heads better when we slip back into our computer or puzzle posture. One more breath. Good. Relax all that. Bring the arms back up. Reach. Hands touch. Bring them together at your heart. And let's open. Warrior two again. This, the foot out to the side lines up to the arch of the other foot. Bring both arms out. And then sink down. Find your breath. Notice what you're feeling here. Ground beneath you. Air around you. Feel your breath moving in and out of you. One more breath. Good. Straighten that out, kind of straight. Push this hip out to the side. Lean over with these fingertips. Triangle. Okay, push back up to standing, drop that arm. Turn your feet close to get, or both turned in. I don't know what I'm saying. Fold forward, fingertips to the floor. You can always use blocks too. And if you're stable, you can take your feet as wide as they'll comfortably go and as long as your balance is okay. Keeping the back pretty straight. So the whole fold is not through bending the back, it's right here through that hip crease. Okay, carefully, slowly bring your chest back up away from the ground. Walk your feet closer together, mindful of your back. Rise up, even using hands on thighs if you need to, to press back up. Good. Come down onto the floor. Off. And lay on back. Hug your knees towards your chest. That can be just here. If it feels amazing to you, you can wrap your whole arms around your legs. You can even hug in like a tight little ball. Nothing should hurt. Do what feels good. One more breath. Okay. Bring your knees down to the floor. Or feet down to the floor. Sorry. Arms out to the sides. Flip your palms up, but not just from the wrists. From the shoulder. Rolling your shoulder open. And it'll feel like you're tucking your shoulder blades even close together on your back on the floor. 
and then breathe in, lift your bottom off the ground into bridge. And when you get up here, you can kind of tuck, rock a little bit and tuck the shoulder blades even closer together. And it gives your upper body, the chest, this opening. Breathe here. One more breath. Push a little higher. Exhale. Relax. Take everything down. Ah, rock your knees side to side. Bring your knees back to center. Roll over onto one side. Oops, I gotta adjust. Onto one side. Get the cushion you had earlier, or the pillow. Bring it up about waist level, so it's sort of in front of, or at lining up to your lowest rib. Stretch out across it. Bottom arm stretched out. Top arm can be here or maybe even bring it up and over a little bit. One more breath here. Okay. Bring the top arm to wherever you need it to go. So you can push up away from this, from the pillow. And all we're going to do here is switch to the other side. i got to grab my thingy. So just pivot your hips. Same thing. Lie back down. Edge of the pillow or cushion coming right into the waist. One more breath. Okay, start to push up. Top arm comes down and beside you. Lift up away from that. Let's come into resting pose. So that can be just lying flat on your back and you can bring the cushion under your knees. I think we've done that before. Or we can do again, just like we started out with the cushion under our backs. If you can, get both. Get a cushion for here and then one under your knees to prop them up or bring your knees, shins and feet to the sofa, couch, whatever. Rock and get yourself situated where it's comfortable. Flop your arms out. And breathe. You're already breathing but notice your breath. Notice how your body feels now compared to before you started, hopefully a little looser, a little more energized, but also more calm and relaxed. Feel the support of the ground underneath you and the cushion underneath your back. In life, we are often guilty of not accepting support from other people, from anything in life. We're going to push through, we're going to do it on our own, I don't need any help. But the support of others and family and right now of loans or unemployment or neighbors. 
It's huge. So just like the support we find in other people, find that right now in the ground underneath you, in the cushion under your back. Feel the ground and this cushion rising up to so tenderly, lovingly hold you. Gravity of the earth keeping us from floating out into space. And you can lie here as long as you want. Or if you're ready to come up and go back into your day, then gently pick up your hips a little bit so you can turn and roll to one side. And then bring the top arm over, hand pressing down into the ground, elbow helping lift you up. Come back to a comfortable seat. Sit up tall, close your eyes. It's been said that yoga is the practice of tolerating the consequences of being yourself. And I think that's so profound because it is through yoga, through breathing, through this mindfulness and this moving meditation we do, we learn to cope with simply being alive. Because it's hard. It is hard to be alive. To face all the things that we have to face. To work and to pay bills. And to live in, with the dynamics of family and friends and co-workers. It's always hard, and it's never been as hard as it is right now. But yoga gives us a chance to pause, to sort of take a time out from our life, to let our minds slow down and stop looping, and stop thinking and trying to figure this out, trying to guess exactly when the world's going to open back up. We don't know. We have no idea. What I do know is I can sit here and move a little bit and breathe and cope with everything that's going on. And like I said before, if you haven't yet today, I hope you get outside. No matter what the weather, no matter how you're feeling, get outside, look at the sky. If you can see plants and trees, look at them. If you can't, look at the ground. Look anywhere you can look and feel the air, feel your breath. Okay, bring your hands together at your heart. Press your thumbs into your heart. And take one last breath just for you and no one else before you go back into your life. Let it out. May this practice carry you through whatever's left of your day and through the days to come until you're able to sit and practice again. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste.